Greetings and salutations. What are our fans called again? I don't know. Internet people? Internet people? Are you saying that we're sending this to the 4 channers? I'm a 4 channer. Ew. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Super Happy Fun Jabbertron Tea Party with Kiki and Bone. Today we'd like to start our topic with the, uh, what were you saying, Kiki? The new DBZ promo that's incoming? Yes, that was what I was talking about before you made a stop to do that. See, you're not actually supposed to... Good job, idiot. You're not supposed to reflect the fact that we've been talking for the last 20 minutes trying to come up with a good intro. God! Ugh! You suck. Yes, I do. Anyway, so I haven't seen this yet. You apparently have. Um, have you have you actually seen it? Seen it, or do you just know of it? It there was a tiny little promo that somebody managed to record, and it shows barely anything. And then it it after that it talks in Japanese without subtitles, so I didn't catch much about how there will be a new sh- uh, new movie. That's so, all I know about it. So Goku saves the day again? Pretty much. Um, so basically, they're just trying to milk the cash cow. Yeah. Or squeeze another egg out of the golden goose, I guess you could say, depending on where your terminology for uh, beating a dead horse to into a, red, a fine red paste comes in. I mean, seriously, like... They should have been done with DBZ like 15 years ago. I mean, they theoretically were, but they kept making movies. And it was just like, seriously, guys, like, let Goku just die and live in peace in the afterlife. Don't keep bringing him back to defeat horrible monsters from beyond the stars. And Kiki has nothing to say. She's just like, oh, okay. I was reading something and scratching my face. Oh, my God, you're no, terrible. Clearly. Fucking the, uh need some Adderall. Producers are behind this are trying to make us forget about the American film. So they're making it to try to make Americans forget about the film that no American actually saw? Oh god, I saw it. Why? It was on TV. Well, that's not really that big of a deal. I'm guessing you got it for free then. (laughs) Watch it. I wasn't even at my own place, so yeah. I in no way paid for it. What channel had it on? Like, I'm just curious if you remember. I think it was on demand, actually. But it, if not, then it was on, like, one of those weird extra movie channels that aren't a big name, but sometimes come in a bundle. Oh, yeah, like, if you buy, if you buy like, two of the, what is it, like, two of the five major um, premium networks, you get, like, extra with it. Yeah. And, uh... Or, uh... Our uh, our satellite system at work has like all those movie channels unlocked because my boss is crazy and you know actually went ahead and you know paid for was it Super Primo Platinum Deluxe Deluxe Ultra Magna, you know, <laughs> I'm. What do you even like? I don't even know what they call it. It's the highest package. You get everything. I I I I highly wonder why we even bother with the um, you know anyway. But yeah. Let's see. Uh, things to talk about. Let's talk about Penny and Stocking. We could, yeah, since I've, I've finally finished that. Um, let's see. Penny and Stockings. I remember basically next to nothing about it because we stayed up all night watching it. About three episodes in, I started to get delirious. It was fun. Like, I watched it. I was awake. But all I know is there was a lot of swearing, a lot of eating cake, and a lot of gratuitous sex. Oh, and and shit monsters blowing up. Yes. That's all I remember from the first episode is it's, oh my god, it's a monster made of shit. How are we going to defeat it? With our panties. Well, only one of them uses panties. Okay, and their stockings, whatever. Which, considering the names of all the other characters, is that is that what most angels and demons go by? The article they use for weaponry? 
Which doesn't explain anything about garter belt. I don't know. I, f I feel like that's probably not more of a real name for him, more of a thing he likes to be called. Mm. I, I did I did like the insinuation that he was screwing the the what is it, briefs? Mm hmm Yeah. Uh, Poor little nerd boy who was actually a hot yeah. Yeah, rich I, boy whose penis is the key to the gate to hell. That's one way to do it, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I, I've got I've got no clue. It was fairly good. Um really funny. Uh, me and a friend, you know, watching it, we we were basically we basically considered probably one of the best. It was one of the well, uh, how do I put this? It was one of the most well done dubs I've seen in a long time. They did a good job of, I think, um, making the jokes work in in English that weren't going to make a whole lot of sense in Japanese. Like they had some word puns and stuff that just would not, if you were to translate it into English, would not make any sense. And so they did a lot of, they did a lot of, it was very, the, the use of cursing was much better, mostly because, well, Americans are just really good at cursing. The cursing was amazing. We watched episodes one through, like, one through four in both English and Japanese, and I was extremely um, pleased with the, uh, the amount of, the amount and use of cursing in English was just amazing. We we're still stuck on the line. What the fuck did he fuck just fucking happened in here? I, I I don't know what was so funny about it, but just just them randomly uttering "What the fuck did he fuck" just had us rolling in our seats. And then all the weird all the weird pop culture references in the titles, like "Penny and Stockings of the Dead" and uh, the Ghostbusters one, and there was like a Pulp Fiction one, and uh, Chuck Chuck to the Future. I just, I, I don't know. I mean, it was good. Uh, we're going to rewatch it at some point when we're not trying to do it at like 10 o'clock <laughs> at night and then staying up till 6 a.m. to catch the entire thing because we can't stop. And then me, you know, falling asleep at about 4 a.m. because I'm literally had been up since 3 a.m. the day before. And I'm just like, oh my God, I can't stay awake. And then, like, I did that thing where like you're falling asleep, you're falling asleep, and you manage to, to fight it off long enough that you just completely lose the urge to sleep. And then you're just like, oh crap, I'm going to be up for another 18 hours before I feel like I need to sleep again. This is going to suck. Well, I'm not actually that big of a fan of the dub version. That's That has more to do with the voice actress for Stalking. Oh, she was great, though. I, I did not like it, nor did I like the way she was written. I felt it she lost her character in the dub version. We couldn't make out what her character was in the subs. Well, you're bad at reading subs, then. <laughs> you're bad at reading. <laughs> I, no, I just felt like she was too much like a carbon copy of Panty. But in, she wasn't. That was thing she was the opposite of panty she was more she was more interested in cake that no, no that her veracity for sugary treats was akin verbally not character wise but verbally like let's fucking do this so i can have some sugar doesn't feel right coming out of stocking's mouth see i i thought that i thought that played really well because they were basically salty sailors from from beyond the stars I'm not saying she can't be, you know, a curse or anything. Very much so, but but you just shouty. You you can't you can't make a statement and then try to back out of it. You said the cursing didn't feel right. I didn't say the cursing didn't feel like. I felt said I felt like she was a carbon copy, that she was boisterous, as opposed to boisterous. still having the ability to you know yell and be angry and whatnot, but being more subtle other times. Like she doesn't have to yell every fucking line. She didn't. That was the whole thing. She wasn't it the felt to me like she was. Well, you obviously you didn't watch all whatever many episodes there were. I don't remember at this point. Thirteen? Twenty yeah. six? Thirteen plus a special. Yeah, the special was great. That that really had us rolling, especially because it was a total troll. Like literally that was our whole point. Like none of us knew what was coming. There were three of us actually. One of us left um like I would say 
watched uh, five episodes before the end. He had to go home. He was tired at like 3 a.m. And we made it to the end and we're just like, oh my god, this entire show was a big troll. Pretty much. Like that last uh, minute and a half. I wonder what happens if we use our weapons on angels. I don't know. Oh yeah, by the way, totally fooled you. I'm a demon. God darn it. <laughs> Holy just got trolled for like the last six hours. It's just like I, I, I thought that I thought that was probably the one of the best parts of the entire show was that they basically they, they trolled you because they made you think there's gonna be another season which there obviously is not going to be unless there's some sort of divine intervention. Um I don't think there's any plans to. No, they said they might come back to it later, from what I've seen from the interviews with the creators or the, the creative staff. But it was like it was they left they totally did that whole thing where they're like, Oh, we might be back, but they're not going to and so there's this whole like we just got we just got completely trolled. And it's it's obvious that it is a troll because at no point did it make any sense for her you know, that was so far out of left field and there was so there was such little explanation of what's going on that it it was an obvious troll. Like this was in no way. I mean, the show is not really based in reality or a firm reality, but it was just kind of like there was this sense of like they were just doing that to to basically um, what's the word I'm looking for? Fire up the fanboys. Yes, I believe that is what you're looking for. I mean, that's a little explanation of trolling, but you know what I mean. Like there was, like we we initially thought that maybe it was a it was an actual jab towards like oh look what a twist you know Shamana Shamalama Ding Dong style you know like oh what a twist, but it was more it was really more along the lines of just a, like hey look we're gonna troll the fan base because they're all like oh this show's awesome and they're just like buzzing, <coughs> my God, I got old. Uh, I have to say that is. Uh... Probably a good way of saying it. I enjoyed the ending. Especially, just in general, the uh, last two episodes were really great. Yeah, it, it took that. It was, one of those, it was one of those Japanese things where it's just like, no plot, no plot, no plot, no plot, no plot, no plot, and like the last... Plot! <laughs> Hang on a second. We just went like 12 episodes with no plot, and then you just throw it at us in the last episode? Screw you, dog. Screw you. <laughs> I've mostly been, other than that, I've mostly been watching uh, Hio Miyazaki films, which has been interesting. And then today I started watching Satoshi Kun films that I found because, hell yeah, it's Half Price's 40th birthday today, so half off everything in the store. Are you sure it's Kun? I've always said Kong. Kun. Americans pronounce it Kong because they're idiots. Probably because it's an O. I purposely pronounced it wrong so we would get attention. You know, it's like you know, putting the wrong form of your in a big essay and getting like you know thirty thousand more views. Ugh. Like you use the wrong form of your. Well, and then moving away from Panny and Stogging, which we really didn't talk all that much about, but. We'll get back to when you watch it again in less sleepy mode. Let's talk about this awesome man who has sadly passed away. It was pancreatic cancer, I want to say. Yeah. Why is pancreatic cancer? It kills him fast. Uh, for obvious reasons, but... Yeah, no, it was... Uh, I've been slowly but surely collecting some of his work, and I really like it a lot, and... and I really enjoyed the fact that before we started this tonight, I was I watched um, Millennium Actress, which I'd never heard of before, but I immediately recognized the art style as being um, the studio. I don't remember what studio it is that does this art style for him, but that studio and his and it's it's what's what I'm looking for. It's typical of of him. Only this style shows up in his work. That's um, Madhouse did his work. 
Yeah. Which also does great work in general. Oh yeah, Madhouse uh, Clockworks is really good. They did. Um, what did I watch today that was Clockworks? I don't remember. Could have been Princess Mononoke. No, I don't think it was. I think that's straight up Studio Ghibli. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I watched Burn Up today, and that was Clockworks. Uh, Clockworks did the um, just on a side note. Clockworks. The reason why I think they're awesome is they did the uh, they did the animation for the the Americans title of the series is Cat Planet Cuties. It was just a really good show, really well done. Um, but anyway, point being is wait, wait, wait. Going back to that show, isn't that the show where you complained about the silly character design about her having two set of ears? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. She has. She has. She has a set of human ears. She's. She's a cat. She's a cat humanoid alien from. What do they call their planet Katia, and she has a set on top of her head, like. Like logically, if you had a bipedal humanoid, um, yeah. So like, she has a set of cat ears on the top of her head, but she also has a set of humanoid ears, like human ears. And I was just like, why would you have two sets of ears? I don't understand. And they both work. That was the crazy part. It's not like they're one set is decorative. Like her cat ears are just there for for like a like it's a genetic. It's like a like you know, it's the equivalent of a, of a uh, appendix. You know, like it serves no it serves no purpose in in you know the current you know, human evolution or whatever. No, she has two sets of working ears. And I'm like, why? What is the evolutionary basis behind that? Why would you evolve to have two sets of ears? And why would one set be humanoid? But the other set, considering you're based off of cats, or you're saying you evolved from cats, you have a set. So you have the correct, like, you know, feline ears, but you also have humanoid ape ears, primate ears. And it just blew my mind. I'm like, Something's not right here. Somebody didn't think this all the way through when they were designing these characters. Okay, now <laughs> go back to talking about what we were talking about. I don't know what we were talking about. Yatoshi Kwan. Yes, yes. Um, oh, so, yeah. I feel like you're just leading me along to get me to just to just rant and rave for the next hour or so. Come on, Bones. This way. Talk about the anime. Um, no, so I picked up I picked up what I'd never heard of called Millennium Actress, and it's the only one I've found of his work that made that got an official American release but did not get a dub track. So I watched it all in Japanese, which for me is a big achievement because I have the attention span of a goldfish. So um, again? I don't or at least I've never seen it. I don't think Tokyo Godfathers has a dubbed version. I think it does. Hang on, that's the other one I got from him today. Um, no, no, it doesn't. You're right. Nope. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna have to watch that in. I have to watch that in Japanese as well. Great. Now, there are some really, really great dubs out there, but for me, if there's something off on a dub, then I'm probably not gonna watch it in dub. But I've I have not I have not found a dub yet that I could not watch. Maybe I'm just less less picky about what I watch. I take that back. There's been a couple where they were literally so bad, so god awful that I just wanted to tear my tear my ears off and gouge my eyes out. Um, what comes to the mind strongest is I picked up Garzy's Wing, is made famous by the one Kenneth Sage. Yeah, I actually <laughs> bought. I was like, I, I can't pass it up. Anything he reviews that he says is bad, I have to watch at least once. So I picked it up. They're from the, they're from the, uh, they're from the, the, apparently the voice actors in the mid 90s were from the school of yell all the lines as wooden as loud as possible. Just shout at the microphone. Hey, where am I going? What is this? Why am I being attacked by a giant goose? Oh my God. And then you have the one guy, the one guy who's like the, supposed to be like the mystical mage, like he's the he's the grandmaster wizard. He's like, oh, hey guys, I don't believe in helping either side. I think I will stand back and let you decide. Except it's way worse. It it sounds like it sounds like the nerdiest like the nerdiest guy you've ever seen. But the character is this big, like big dark foreboding, you know. Like um, that's what I'm looking like, like like a dark acolyte kind of thing, and I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? 
What the hell? What am I watching? Why am I watching this? Oh, that's right, because I'm a masochist for pain. And it was it was okay. It didn't have a, really didn't have a, a plot. It was a lot of like strewn together bits and pieces with no real That's what I'm looking for. No real like there was no reason. Re- just they just took things like Satoshi Khan, like his movies are really all over the place, but they're they're built that way. Like they 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 seamlessly meld between scenes, and it's not always apparent what happened until like you know a couple minutes in when they've set the next scene. Because I was watching Millennium Actress, and, and Millennium Actress kind of have you ever seen? You ever did you ever watch Paprika? Yeah. Right, you know in the beginning when they're in the dreams and they're like they're they're swirling through different dreams. Yeah. That, that's how the Millennium Actress deals with the actress's like life story, and that's how her life story plays out. Like they're swirling through all these different scenes, and it doesn't always. You're not always sure if she's if she's after she becomes an actress. You're not absolutely sure if she's acting, or if it's a real world scene that's going on until either they say cut, or something happens that proves that you know she's in real life doing something. It, it just kind of. Like he's really good at that. He does that really well, and it it, it can be a really amazing, um, it could be a really amazing, uh, plot device or storytelling device, but you have to be really careful how you use it because I've seen it used a lot. And it's used really badly, and nothing makes any sense. So yeah, Kiki, what are your thoughts on the man? Well, his movies were a big part of my, you know, going. Especially to my friends that anime wasn't the crap they were getting on TV. It was also thoughtful. It was could be just as good as anything, really. So, because it was um, not rated, at least the copy you could get at the uh, rental place, I could rent Perfect Blue, Millennium Actress, shit like that for the longest time. And it's great to sit people down and show them these wonderful films with either in dubbed or subbed with not only just the films themselves, but the music is wonderful, the writing, and the animation style really, you know, slaps you in the face that this probably isn't going to be your traditional, you know, catch them all sort of thing. What you're describing is a show and jump title or shonen title. Yes. Not Pokemon. It's like, you know, DBZ, Bleach, One Piece. For a lot of my friends, that, that, that had been all they had ever seen because that was on TV. It's what sells because it's aimed at it's aimed at uh, little boys basically. Mm-hmm. It's guaranteed to sell toys, which American cartoon companies love because that's where they make their money is selling toys to kids or adults who really want toys. <laughs> that, that's a thing. Just that that's due to the fact of of anime's growing influence on American television. Also, as oddly as it sounds, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic has had a real strong effect on that. Yes, it has. Just non-traditional gender roles are always really interesting. Well, not that I like a lot of kids' cartoons these days, but there are quite a few that make me sit there and go, this is a good thing. Because especially in America, animation is really a comedy with maybe a little bit of drama... Or meant for kids. Yep. You're not even if it's serious, it's it's meant for kids. Unless it's some independent film, major studios are gonna look at an animation film and it's not gonna be something serious. It's not gonna be something all that thought provoking. It's going to be in the end a kid film. Mm hmm. And that bugs the fuck out of me. Well, I can't. I can't actually name the last, the last American produced or American studio produced serious f- animated film that came out. Like I can't think of it. I can't. I've, as you've been talking, I've been trying to think of like the last, you know, American made serious animated film, and I can't think of it because it's literally like it's it's Pixar, it's DreamWorks, and it seems like there's one other big company that does animated stuff, and Pixar is definitely. You know, family friendly. Um, DreamWorks is is aimed at family friendly entertainment. Not uh, that 
their movies aren't, you know, gorgeous and most of the time good. It's just they're yeah. kid films in the end. Dream they're, they're made for, you know, adults to see too, but they're really geared at the younger audience. They're, they're armed in such a way that parents, that they have, they have jokes for kids and jokes for parents, basically. And you can, like, I, I, I know I personally, for like media, media courses, I've dissected, uh, I dissected the original Kung Fu Panda and like, you know, and, and described, you know, major story elements that are like classical literature archetypes, you know, stuff that, that's a classical um, plot element in, in literature. Because in the end, I mean, if you look at, I mean, it's visual media, but it's telling a story and you can, you can dissect any movie into its major parts. Like what, you know, it's the old, it's the old, like, you know, they were, like I was trying to describe it. I said, you know, basically if you look at TV tropes and you, you know, you go to that movie's, you know, page, it'll dissect all the major tropes that are used, you know, stuff, major storytelling elements. Everybody, you know, everybody laughs at me when I say that, but like, seriously, it's a great source of, of like actual academic, you know, academic plot elements. I mean, obviously, you know, you can't say like, you know, the man in black and that'll make sense to, you know, uh, a professor of, of, you know, fine literature, but you know, the, the, it, it helps you identify major storytelling elements in even, you know, movies, cartoon shows, uh, you know, you name it. Sorry, that's a little weird little aside, but it's no, it's true. I, I um... think validity as long as it can be, it can be academically dissected. I mean, that was that was my whole argument when people were, I like I personally, like last semester there was a there was a guy, uh, there was a guy um, that was that was saying, well, you know, children's cartoons these days have no have no value. They have no merit. They are they are simple, mindless entertainment. And it's like, no, you can you can dissect what they're what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, truly, that's that's their purpose is to just be you know entertainment for children. But the people who are writing who are writing and developing and producing these shows are not idiots. They're not morons. They're 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 building classical you know storytelling hooks into their into their work. It's like. Um, I bought I bought the first season of Adventure Time uh, on DVD, and I'm looking at it and I'm going, you know, these are pretty standard storytelling tropes. You know, you have the you have the the chaotic good hero. You know, you have love interest. You have the you have the Lancer, which is his dog Jake, and it, it, you know it is it's mindless entertainment for children. But there are definite there are definite elements of of what you would call serious literature built into silly silly cartoons for children all classically produced you know animation has a theoretical value you just have to find out what that value is in reality well like, I think it's that true. can be said about pretty much anything but yeah well, well i mean I a hard time you know finding the value in you know jersey shore or pawn stars okay i'm going to ignore pseudo reality shows in, in this but, um, no, a lot of times, well, there's really no point in putting something on the air that doesn't have at least some semblance of a plot, because unless your lit your literal audience is someone who has almost no brain function, you have to find a way to keep their attention, and we say that, yeah, pretty lights work, but that really only works on infants. Yeah. Well, it definitely helps. A pretty a pretty show will be much more attention grabbing. I say a well animated show will be much more attention grabbing than a show that's badly or shoddily um, animated. This is the end of part one. You have been listening to the super happy fun Jabbertron Tea Party with Kiki and Bones. Wasn't that a waste of time? Super happy, fun Jabbertron tea party. Yep. How are we smoking? Okay. Let's see here. Okay. What was it? Magical tea time? Something like that? You had a super long. Just, you just... don't even know the name of our show. Continue now with part two.
the super happy fun Jabbertron tea party with Kiki and Bones. They're happy now. What's really interesting too is like as Americans, especially with anime, we don't see that shoddy animation because by the time we get like you might see it if you if you torrent you torrent or stream stuff before it gets released on this side of the ocean. But if you buy it, if you buy it from a store, by the time you get it, the version you're getting is like the second the second run from Japan. Yeah. Yeah, the digitally cleaned up and freshened version. It's like it's like okay. I haven't watched it yet, but I have. I have. What is it? Uh, Pula Magi Magica Madoka. <laughs> Madoka for sure, because I can never say that entire title. So I have. I got the. I've been buying. I bought the first set of three because it contains both the Blu-ray and the DVD. And what I found out from talking to friends who have watched both versions um, online, <coughs> pirates. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the uh, the Blu-ray version is like massively worked up compared to the DVD version. Like the DVD version was like the second the second major revision when they cleaned up everything and you know and like like the plaid like I don't know if you if you remember like um, like the theatrical version of of um, the rebuild the first the first movie in the rebuild of Evangelion. Um, the new girl the new I can I don't know her name because I haven't seen the show. I want to see it. Um, what is her name? I think it's Japanese. I just can't think of it. Um, point being is like, so she has that plaid skirt in her in her uh, her school outfit, right? Yeah. The version in the, when you saw it in the theaters in Japan, the version they had for her skirt was very basic. But when they when they brought it out on DVD, it was it was more more complex, more detailed. And by the time they got to the Blu-ray. They had like completely redone all of the like detail animation to the point where like when you see when you see like character concept sketch sketches like the super complicated plaid skirt that she wears that's what it actually looks like in the movie like they actually went back and reanimated those sections with like you know correctly they've had you know a year to redo it so now they've you know they've gone back and increased detail and fixed stuff and. And I, I really find that I find that interesting because as Americans we miss out on that because we don't we don't see this stuff directly as it's broadcast. It'd be equivalent to like to like an American drama. I I, I, I don't know. I'll say House because that was a fair, that's, that's a fairly well known TV show in the U.S. Um, be like if if they shot it, they shot it. You got it on TV and it was you know it was good. It was good enough. But then when they went to do it on DVD, they went back shoots of everything and because they had more time so then they went back and they shot everything with you know like better lighting and 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 the actors aren't hung over from a night of partying or something and well, I, I, don't, I don't know how to really put that into words for like american television because we don't rely heavily on on animation well it's kind of form it's not exactly the same but it's kind of when you buy a dvd and you're getting all those scenes that weren't allowed on tv well, yeah, there's that too, but that's yeah. that that's also true in Japan. They do a lot of the like the the bright light obscuring nudity and that kind of thing on television. Yeah, or the uh, sometimes they they just don't instead of covering it's just you know somehow not there. They just cut it out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are entire there are entire bath scenes that I wasn't aware. Like I've had friends who only watch the stuff like first the first run when it streamed like you know right after it was released. And they weren't even aware, and they come over and they're like, "Oh, that show was great. Let's watch it." And we sit down and watch it. And like, I don't remember all this nudity. I'm like, "Really?" Because it seems like there's a lot of it. I can't believe they allowed. <laughs> like, no, they don't. That's the thing. Like, Americans have this really weird conception. Like, I mean, they do. They have more nudity than we do, but like, there's a, they block a lot of stuff out, like on the actual broadcast versions. Yes, it's it's very. You can watch whatever the hell you want in your home, kind of thing. I don't really know what to say to that other than it it's just it's it's an interesting cultural perspective to realize that they have they have a they have a finished version that they want to show but is not acceptable to basically the censors and so they cut a bunch of stuff out so that it's it's a it 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 meets requ- minimum like the minimum requirements to be acceptable and then they you know and then when they get to the home release they just put the the final cut 
on you know saying the the finished the finished but not edited the unedited finished cut on the DVD and so there's a whole bunch of like my friends have been like there was no they like all the nudity was blocked with this this and this and you know when you get the the DVD it's completely unblocked everything is visible they're running around butt stark naked and it, it's really interesting too because it's like I'm one of these people where like I take a gamble on stuff if I think if I think like the cover art looks funny. I'll buy something just for shits and giggles to watch. And I picked up stuff like, um, where is it up there? I bought, uh, I bought strike witches, right? Cause I thought the, I thought the cover. <gasps> oh my God. And I was watching it. I was watching it. And, uh, and one of my friends came over and he was just like, what the hell are you watching? And I'm like, strike witches. Apparently he's like, that's a lot of little girls underwear and i'm like uh yeah i don't know what to say it's apparently okay like it, it made it it made it to these shores and season two was supposedly coming sometime this fall and i figure i'll i'll pick it up since i already got season one anyway finish the collection as it were but it was you know and it's not particularly it's not it's not it's sexual as far as i can tell it's just it's fan service it's fan service yeah Considering they, like, their legs become airplane parts. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's too what it was going to be when they started, you know, not wearing pants. Yeah, got 15, 15 old girls running around with no pants on. This is completely acceptable in this world. Like, there's no question of why a girl be running around in her underwear. Fine. However, I'm like, oh, it's because they can't wear pants because their method of flight is stupid. Kind of awesome at the same time. Airplane pilots of reality. Sad, however, I uh, I got my order from I got my order in today, and I've got the first I got the first season of uh, Saber Marionette, which I've been wanting to see because I have I have Saber, I have the second or third season plus the movie. I was only missing the first season, but it turns out there's like an intermediate season that I need to get to called like Plasmatic Crisis. And I can pick it up from Amazon for I think it's like 30 or 40 bucks, but it's just like crap. I got to buy something else before I can watch it. But I'm going to have to like stop after the first season until I can get until I get paid again next week and order more stuff. Sorry, that's just me as a fanboy, you know, bemoaning the fact that I don't have unlimited money. Well, no, I... Saber Marionette was something I had in the old days. Like, my brother went to a convention once and came back with a bunch of VHS tapes. Nice. <laughs> but I, I I, barely remember... I remember the animation style more than anything else. And I don't think we had all of it. Probably not. Mm. I truly... Sorry. I leaned back to crack my back. I, I truly salute the 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 people who are like in their 30s and 40s who have been who lived through the 90s era of VHS tape series because seriously like it's it's it it like like where we are now for I mean like and I and I understand I understand and I will make the disclaimer that obviously um, physical media is a dying is a dying thing like people buy you know the iTunes version or the Amazon version or they just stream it but. I, I salute the people who who lived through a world without high speed internet and DVDs and so had to buy you had to make a decision if you're gonna get sub or dub and then you only got two episodes uh a tape. So a twenty six episode series took thirteen VHS tapes and if you watch those tapes too often it burned them out. I think that's a thing like a lot of kids are never gonna know is that there was a time when magnetic media was king. And that media burned out if you watched it too often. The stuff stopped working. You had to buy a new tape because you watched it too many times. Assuming you could find it to buy, depending on how old it was. It's not like it's not like the like you know like late nineties, early two thousands. We hit the era of DVD, and I mean, there's some there's some anime that you're not gonna find that's been out of print for ten years. But like a lot of stuff, if you wanna if you really wanna put the money down, there's a there's a seller somewhere that will sell you what you're looking for. I've only I've only ever found one one title that I cannot find for sale anywhere on the internet, and that's um, there's a there's a there's a sequel to the series Galaxy Angel called Galaxy Angel Rune, 
volumes one through three were made. Volume four, only 10,000 copies made, and it's completely gone. I've never seen a copy for sale anywhere. And I've told myself if I ever see a copy for sale, like if I come across it in my, you know, my weekly search of, you know, eBay and stuff, I'll just buy whatever it costs. I don't care. I'll throw it on a credit card. I'll pay it off because it is seriously, like it's not even that good of a show. It's just that 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 volume was made in such small quantities that it is just gone. It is not available. I wonder how close to the game the anime is. What now? Galaxy Angel? Assuming... Yeah, it's, um... That explains so much. It's a shoujo slash strategy game. Okay. And I played it. I'm wondering how close the show is. I have no clue. I've never played the game, so I have no idea. But I own I own the first series with the box set. I just, uh, I haven't... I haven't found the other the other bits and pieces different you know like different sequel series are not ridiculously hard to find so I haven't I haven't hit that point where I'm like I need to buy it before it becomes so rare that I cannot I cannot find it anymore I, I think that I think it's a, I think it's time for me to explain that you know or to make the the note that I'm a major collector of of anime DVDs to the point of well, you folks can't see it, but there's shelves upon shelves upon shelves surrounding me at the desk full of nothing but anime DVDs. Because I have no life. I work and go to school, so, you know. Well, it's kind of a pricey hobby, too. Because you were telling me how much uh, Madoka costs for, what, it's 12 episodes and they spread it over three sets? That's if you want. Okay, so case in point, um, I'm not absolutely sure. I'd have to double check the pricing, but if I remember correctly, if you want just the DVDs, the DVDs are twenty five dollars a piece, and it's spread across three DVDs, which is fairly affordable. Or for forty dollars a piece, you can get. I'm sorry, it's thirty. It's I think it was like thirty five for the DVD, and then forty. 40 for the Blu-rays by themselves per per unit, or for 75 they give you the limited edition box set with both, and the I think the first one's got the soundtrack. I don't know what the second and the third have because I haven't ordered them yet because I'm not made of money and I wanted to make sure the show was actually interesting because I didn't have oh, buy it. Oh, I'm gonna buy it next paycheck. I just I, I have to let the I have to let the current bill billing cycle end before I do it again so I'm not throwing like $500 against my credit card bill um, I could also just you know to save myself the pain of having to drop that money at the end of the month I could just I've got the money in the bank I could just you know grab like a you know like one of those prepaid like online debit cards and then just load it with the money I need and buy it that way I have this weird thing where like I don't mind charging stuff but it really sucks getting that like that $600 bill at the end of the month like I have the money and I can pay it, but it sucks writing a check for 600 bucks to pay the bill off. So I don't end up having to eat like, you know, $15 in interest. Well, you just have to watch the show before the films come out. Well, I'll have that. I mean, I'll, I'll have the sets probably before I'm guessing I'll have all the sets in my possession before I'd say the end of September. So what I might do is just buy one set a month. They they don't seem to be they don't seem to be like a limited thing right now. Like they're not to the point where. Um... Oh, the other fun thing is because it's Aniplex. Basically, the only company I can get it from for a decent price is Right Stuff in Iowa, which is great because I'm located in Minnesota, so they're literally like a two day postal cycle from my house. So every time I spend more than fifty dollars, I take the free, you know, super saver shipping that says it'll take ten days to get cross country, and it's here in two days because, like, Grimes is right outside of Des Moines. So like, you know, I order if I ordered something today, they'd cycle it tomorrow, they'd ship it the day after. It takes I think it takes four days total because if I order like tonight, assuming it's like the week, not a weekend. If you order Monday, I ordered Monday, Tuesday they fill the order, Wednesday they shipped it. Thursday, it was on a it was on a truck coming here, and then 
um, this morning it was on the it was on the mail truck to my house. People were like, well, that that's shitty. It's four days. It's like, yeah, but for twelve dollars for a single item, you can get UPS. It's like I can save twelve bucks. And I only have to wait an extra day. And as far as I've seen, the postal service has done a good job not absolutely mangling my packages on like UPS and FedEx. Just my little gripe, anyway. It's not something I think Kiki runs into on a regular basis with mail order. I'm not absolutely sure. I can't remember the last time I actually got something in the mail. I've I've been moving more and more to mail order with with DVDs just because, well, most most uh, brick and mortar stores are moving away from selling anime like. I, uh, the first thing that went, I'm trying to remember in the exact, I'm going to try to remember this in, in my area, at least the exact order in which, um, uh, different business, different multimedia businesses stopped carrying stuff. I think the first thing that happened was, um, like Walmart and Target stopped carrying like a vast majority of, of stuff. Like it used to be, you could go, there was a big movie or a popular series like Dragon Ball Z. You could go into, you know, like a Walmart or Target and pick it up like super low price. Well, then they stopped. They stopped doing that around here, and they may still do it others in other places like where you live. I don't. I don't know. You can still get them um, around here. Uh, some months the selection's kind of crappy though. Yeah, and then and then like the local comic book stores kind of things stopped carrying. Well, the, the first thing that happened was like mid two thousands, like two thousand five, two thousand six. We, for a while, like, when anime was... You remember when anime was, like, super big and everybody was playing it on TV and mm-hmm. you catch new series, like, every couple months they'd put a new series on, like, Adult Swim? Okay, when that was going on, around here at least, they had, they had like, purpose-built, like, Japanese culture shops, which were basically anime, manga, you know, uh, snack food, uh, wall scrolls, you know, equivalently like what right stuff is in Iowa for mail order. Like it's all Japanese stuff, you know, anime, manga, books, you name it. Well, they were first to go. And then as, as the, as the wave died down little by little, as we've come closer to present. And then after that, the big, like, (laughs) excuse me, the big box stores stopped carrying, as I stated before. And then, um, the next big thing that happened was um, after that, the comic book stores stopped carrying it. And then more recently, um, the last, I don't know if you guys have it out in California, but have you ever heard of a, a set of companies called FYE or Suncoast? Yes. Uh, we used to have an FYE. Okay. Get close down. As far as I know, there's one FYE left in in Minnesota, and it's at the Mall of America. There was a Suncoast at a at a mall near where I live. It went out of business in March because literally the company just said, "Look, there's no market for this anymore. There's no point to having a movie store." Well, so that happened, and then I stopped in at a local Best Buy. I don't think Best Buy is out west where you are. No, no, it is. It's hilarious out here. They're they're based they're based here in Minnesota, so that's why I was curious if they had gotten all the way out there yet or not. Um, they the ones around here, well, the la- the one near my house, the nearest one, the guy the guy like the manager in charge of the media section told me they were basically going to stop carrying anime, and so I was like, well, that basically leaves me online sources and buying used from places like Half Price Books. Happy birthday, Half Price. Um, so yeah, that was kind of it's kind of a sad day for me. It used to be I could go anywhere and and collect. Now it's like I have to search high and low to find somebody who's not you know an online dealer in order to order stuff that's new. And and recently I'd been buying a lot of like <coughs> like when Funimation releases a new title, I've been buying it like on the Tuesday when it comes out from from Best Buy. I stop on my way home from work, you know, spend the fifty bucks or whatever buy the title and then just throw it on the pile because I've got the pile because I work a lot anyway not a lot I only work like ah, 30 hours a week right now but it's there's a lot of weird hours so you know I do a lot of the you know get home from work stay up talk to Kiki till like 2 a.m. on the local chat room that we all frequent Kiki and I are on the same type of schedule I just wake up a little earlier and do far more with your life. Well, I'm expected to do far more with my life. 
because, you know, I still live with parental units who are like, you have to do something. You can't just sit there all day. So I work because that's doing something. Oh, and walking the dog. On a side note, my, my mother's on vacation visiting family in, in another state, and the dog is basically her baby because I am I am my parents' only child, and thus she had no one to mother after I hit a certain age because I was like, Mom, come on. Stop coddling me. I'm, I'm trying to go to school here. Um, and uh, so the dog is her baby. And he's very, very, very spoiled. He sleeps. He gets to sleep on the bed with my folks. He gets fed when he wants. He gets walked as often as he wants. And so it's been my, my, my dad basically told me a couple days ago, he's like, hey, can you just walk the dog for me in the morning since you're, you know, working in the evenings? I was like, oh, sure. No problem. Yeah, the dog, the dog gets really upset when, as complete aside, the dog gets really upset when you don't walk him long enough. But it's been a really interesting, you know, moment for me today when he's like we've been walking for an, like an hour and he's still just like I'm like let's go home we're like you know five blocks from my house I'm like let's go home and I'm pulling him he's like no no let's keep going and I'm like you're 13 years old you shouldn't want to walk this much anyway back to what we're talking about yeah uh, I'm really sad that that nobody's stocking anime in brick and mortar stores anymore well they are but it's really hard to find well see I live near Sacramento and a I don't want to call it a yuppie town, but it's like a yuppie meets hippie slash college town called Davis. So you can normally find not, you know, anime that everybody knows in one of those towns. And if not, I could always go to San Francisco or buy online. Mm hmm. Well, you're also you're also because you're in California, you're also closer to the vast majority of um, licensing studios. Yes, I am. I I think the only I think the only major licensing company that's not in California at this point is no, I think they're all in California because ADV used to be in Texas, but I think they when they got broken up, the uh, they moved a lot of their operations to uh, the new companies that sp- that's that uh, sprung it up from their remains moved a lot of their operations to California, like recording and dubbing and all that stuff, or, you know, recording, editing, you know, that kind of thing. That all got moved to California because it's well, more, what's the ruling for? Um, they're more accepting of that, or they they got better tax breaks, I think. I, I'm not sure. It's kind of taxes. It's also kind of easy to find places to do that here in California, probably a lot because of Hollywood. There are a lot of, even in my town, I can find a place to do, you know, recording or I could go buy that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, there's definitely that too. But, you know, when you're talking, you know, professional, at least minimally professional grade um, recording, recorded media, yeah. it, you need a studio. I mean, they, I could, there's a place in town that does that. And, and like, we're but, not even in Southern California, but for some reason we need places like that. Yeah, what I'm saying is like you buying your own equipment is probably not going to be the same level as somebody with a you know five million dollar recording studio, you know ADR system. I don't know. If I had oodles of cash, I probably could. But I'm saying you don't. In, in magical dream world, I'm yeah. talking about magical dream world. You know where I, I'm not living not gonna... in a bedroom. A bedroom yeah. I can barely stand in. What I what I meant is the average person doesn't have the money, doesn't have personally have that kind of money to set up like a professional recording studio out of their home unless they're already a big celebrity, or you're Walt Disney. Screw Walt Disney, seriously. They got they got their I, I, they do good work. Don't get me wrong, but they got their claws into Hio Miyazaki stuff, and it's really good. But it's always it's always it's always big name stars doing the voices, which is sometimes a bad thing. Take my word on this from, from being in panels with like the guys that do like Futurama and stuff like Billy West, John DiMaggio, uh, Maurice LaMarche. Um, these, these guys are very clear about the fact that Tom Kenny, who does SpongeBob, well, actors can, you know, actors generally give very good voice performances. They are not voice actors. That's not their forte. And thus, voice actors' performances will almost always invariably be superior in, in the fact that they can do more voices. They can do different things with their voices. They're, you know, like I, 
Billy West does like six of the main male characters on Futurama, which always blew my mind when I first started watching it. Like he's Soidberg, he's the professor, he's Fry, he's Zap Brannigan. I wanna say he does more than just that. Well, I can't say the other voices he does. That's like the main people. Because Scruffy Scruffy is somebody else. Uh Hermes is the um I can't think of his name and I feel really bad. Um Hermes is the guy from uh Mad T V and I can't think of his name. I feel uh Phil Lamar, I think. I double check. Um and then the the women are the women are uh well and then the other male characters I can't think of any. Qbert, I think, is Oh, who's cute as Qbert's voice? That's um uh, uh, oh, all these I know all these voice actors and actresses like basically by name, but I just can't think of them off the top of my head. Like when I see their names, I'm like, oh, it's uh, you know, so and so. Well, I have a real love. I have a real love for uh, John DiMaggio because he does like voices in everything, dude. He's in. He's uh. He's the. He's like um. Whoop shit. He uh. A whole bunch of people and I was watching Princess Mononoke right, and I'm watching like all these like the thugs. Like the the bodyguards for the main the main woman, uh, yeah he he's a uh, Gonza. Yeah, he's Gonza, and he's he's a whole bunch of incidental characters too, and that's it's it's sorry. Hi. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, give me a break! I don't want it to go spilling on the floor. Um, like only like the little no name titles like before before the Hio Miyazaki films got big. Do you see American voice actors like um, I have pom- I watch I just watched uh, Pompoko, which is the one with the Tanookis. And there's just a ton of American voice actors in it. But you watch the later ones like after I think it's after Spirited Away once he got like world renowned in the, or he got, you know, renowned in this country. And it's all it's all big name actors. There's no there's basically no voice actors in them anymore. I mean, that's obviously because they can. They can draw that kind of talent in, and Disney has the money to pay them, you know, millions and millions of dollars to sit in a, a recording booth and, you know, emote. I still like, um, I can't think of his name. I'm going to feel really bad. I can't think of it. Um, I, I, if I understand correctly, in, in Ponyo on the Cliff by the Sea, um, like, Lord of the, the Lord of the Ocean is, is voiced by... Um, Liam Neeson? Yes! I was like, oh my god, Liam Nielsen, what? What? Oh, okay. I really liked Ponyo, and I know a lot of people don't, because I think it was adorable. So adorable. Which it kind of is, but the dub was really good. I just felt weird about some of the minor script changes. I haven't seen it yet, so I have no clue what you're talking about. But then gonna... we will talk about it after you see it. Not one, it's not one of the ones I own yet. It's on my list. There's, there's like you six, son of a bitch. Six, there's six other films from him that I haven't gotten yet. Like it's Nasca, The Valley of the Wind, Whispers of the Heart, um, that one, Ponyo. Uh, Wait, you saw The Cat Returns before Whisper of the Heart? I've seen Whispers of the Heart. I just don't own it. Okay. On time. Like if I buy it, I'd like to rewatch it because like a lot of these films, I saw them. Um, do you remember like? Five years ago, or probably longer now, when like um, uh, Ed, uh, Adult Swim did like a night where they did like all or like a week they did all of the all the Miyazaki films that were out up to that point. I might have not had the cable at the time. Probably not. There was one summer when I was much younger, like years ago, that they did that. Like I think it was after Spirit Away got to after Spirit Away had been out on DVD for a while, and so like Porco Rosso, Pom Poco. Uh, My Neighbor Totoro, Whispers of the Heart, uh, The Cat Returns. Oh, God. A whole bunch of them that are, like, the older ones, like, from before Princess Mononoke. I had never seen. I I still have never seen Nasca of the Valley of the Wind. I still need to see that. And I really want to see it because it sounds really amazing. Um, But the point being is that I didn't quite quite contemplate. When I was taking advantage of of certain sales this summer buying those films because I was just like, I need... up until this summer, despite having collected anime for over half a decade, the only Ghibli film that I actually owned was uh, uh, 
uh, Kiki's Delivery Service. Don't ask me why that was the one I owned, but that's what was in my collection. And then I picked up uh, Grave of the Fireflies. And then uh, Barnes & Noble in June had a buy to get the third free sale. And I had like $250 in, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, gift cards. And so I, I bought like six of his films. I'm still missing. Let's see. I said Dots of the Value Win, Ponyo, Earthsea. Whispers of the Heart. What else am I missing? My Neighbor Totoro. Seems like there should be one more that I, I haven't seen. I have a list somewhere of the, of, the, of the movies in a series, like the stuff from a certain person or a certain series I'm missing, but I, for the life of me, I can't remember where it is on my computer. I've been, I've been trying to keep up with the list of things I own but need more of to finish out a, a collection. Um, it seems like there's something else from him that, oh, my, uh, my Neighbor's the Yamadas, I think I don't have. I don't think a lot of people have seen that. Oh, America people i should say have seen that one yeah that's kind of esoteric as i mean i own i own really esoteric stuff like uh like the cast uh kegel or or whatever that's the loop on the third movie that he did mm-hmm. like i own that which like blew a lot of people's minds oh and then i i own the newest one uh, the secret life fairy Yeti. i just haven't watched it yet i'm waiting for a day when i'm just kind of sitting around and i have time to sit down at the couch and watch it you have been listening to the super happy fun Jabbertron Tea Party with Kiki and Bones. Wasn't that a waste of time? And Kiki's dead now. Kiki's uh, scratching her nose in an attempt not to sneeze into the microphone. Ah. Woo! <laughs> I knew that would happen because I'm awesome like that. Huh? Huh? And yeah, now there's snot everywhere. Good job. Welcome to Super Happy Fun Jabbertron Tea Party with Kiki and Bones. I still have this strange feeling that I'm missing a whole lot of. Oh, you know, the other one I'm missing is uh, Castle in the Sky. I- I've seen it, I just don't own it yet because I haven't been able to find a. a uh... I will actually want just the DVD version. I don't want the D- Disney's been coming out with like the 3D, 3D, or like the 3D Blu ray, Blu ray, and DVD with the digital copy. And I'm like, I don't really want that one. I just want the DVD because I don't particularly care to own it on Blu ray. Wait, what? 3D Blu ray? What? For Castle in the Sky? Yep. They converted what I want to say is the oldest, oldest Studio Ghibli film to 3D. Hang on, let me see if I can find it. Um, well, that one's from 2010. See, what also takes me off is that they're they're um, now that now that they've got this big contract with um, yeah 1986 for Castle in the Sky. Um, let me see. Let's see if there's anyone older. I think Nasca might be older than that even because. Um, the only reason I say that is because um, in the original Gunbuster in Noriko's room, there's a poster for for uh, Nasca the Valley of the Wind. Mm, maybe. 85. It's older than I am. That makes me feel sad. It's as old as I am. And the whole thing is like, my friends are always like, well, just get the one with get the one with all the stuff in it. I'm like, I don't really feel a reason to do that. Like, I get it, I should, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm one of those asshole people who are like, I'm not sold on, on buying stuff on Blu-ray. Like, certain things I get. Well, oh, it... It's annoying when I see really old movies, and I know that you can clean them up to all hell, but not good enough to call it Blu-ray worthy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, the film came out in '85, and they're like, "Well, you know, as long as they use the original, um, the original, that's what I'm looking for, uh, if the original um, film, they can get like super high quality transfers." But the thing is, they don't do that. Well, not just with anime film, pretty much anything. You know, I'm seeing an old black and white movie being sold on Blu-ray. Okay, I know this was probably filmed in the proper, you know, format, but it's still going to look like shit on my giant-ass screen. Yep, yep. But, yeah, I mean, my whole thing is just based around the fact that, like, I, I get it, I understand why why they do it, but, like, old films, I don't understand the, like, I don't really get the... They're like, you know, like, I'm hearing that um, Funimation's planning on bringing um, Trigun out on Blu-ray, like a digital remaster of the entire uh, Trigun series. And I'm like, that's cool, but I wouldn't buy it again on Blu-ray. I suppose if you don't have it and you can't find it, that makes sense, but... I mean, if you're buying it for the first time, do yeah. it. Just do it. If, if you don't own it, then yeah, go for the Blu-ray. But, um... 
I, like my whole thing with like the Miyazaki films is I already own a lot of them on DVD and I don't see a reason to to jump. And what I'm finding out is that as I've bought as I've I bought a couple how do I put this gently? Um my my friends own own the like the first time they brought it out on DVD and then I bought I bought like the new the new revised version like where Disney has their name like plastered all over all yeah. over the cover and stuff. I opened them up. The discs are exactly the same. Changes to to match like you know modern marketing, but what's actually on the discs is you know it's the exact same DVD inside. Like they didn't change the like what's on the disc art at all. It's the exact like they they made a new cover, but they changed what's inside. It's like getting you know like a storybook where they changed the for a new edition they changed what the cover looks like, but it's the same story inside of the book. And that kind of ticks me off a little bit because I'm like, you know, I've been purposely trying to buy stuff all in the same style. So I don't have like, you know, I have a really weird thing about trying to get stuff that's all in the same era of production. So I don't have like, you know, something from that they just re-released, you know, four weeks ago against something that I, that originally came out. Like it's the version that came out like in 2000. I know I'm weird. Totally unrelated. Because why not? Yeah. Latest. Uh, Silent Hill movie trailer came out, and I'm all sorts of mad. Why is that? Because I am tired of seeing Pyramid Head oh, Out, outside hey. of his contact. Pyramid oh. Head only works in the second game because it only relates to that character. Gotcha. So why is he in the franchise based on the first and third game? Because he's a popular mascot character that they can use. But he doesn't make sense. Doesn't have it's a movie. Yeah, story-wise, he does not make sense. He does not reflect those people. Have you even played a Silent Hill game? I hate survival horror with a burning passion. New topic, then. Yep, sorry, I don't I don't watch horror movies. I don't like survival horror, except for I played all of the Resident Evils because I had a girlfriend that was, like, super into them, and she's like, you have to play them. And I'm like, borrow them to me, I'll play them, shut the hell up. After, like... The second one, it's really no longer survival horror. It's action, action, action. I would say, I would say after four, it's action. I'd say, even though I loved four to death, calling jump scares horror is not something that grooves well with me. That's why I hate the Dead Space games being called survival horror. There's, I give it that it's scary, but it has bad atmosphere and it's all jump shit. I mean, that's what the original Resident Evil was. But I want. I, I miss games, which is why I loved Amnesia the Dark Scent so much, where the scary part wasn't just, you know, oh, a monster. It was also, I don't know what's going to happen next, or I really don't want to actually open that door because I don't want to see what's behind it. It's not even that. What 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 changed was they they went into what I like to call my mentality of survival horror, which is given the, given the fact that if you know you're going somewhere where horrible things might happen, you come fully armed. You don't go into the battle unarmed. And that's what blew my mind about like some of the older survival horror. It's like you spend the entire game low on ammo. I'm going like if you're a paramilitary organization, you're going into like a like a base or a mansion full of horrible monsters, load up on fucking ammo. Have, that's, your, that's why have, I really prefer the games where it's just some guy. Yeah. Cause then it makes sense because he just showed up. And that was my whole problem with like Resident Evil One is it's like I mean, yeah, they crashed, but I'm like you're you're going near a place that you know is full of monsters. How the hell do you not bring tons of ammo with you? That's what I always loved about the Rainbow Six games. Even the new ones are arcadey. Like they like they they know they're going places full of enemies, and so every you know every about you know like ten fifteen minutes of of going through an area, you come across a safe zone that's got they've they've left uh, they've left like an ammo like an ammo crate behind. People are like, well, that's stupid. I'm like, no, that's what would happen if you're an actual paramilitary organization working against terrorists. Anywhere they could stash you a secured box that you could reload your shit, knowing you're going to be you know, in the field for a prolonged amount of time, that's exactly what would happen. You would find people from your side waiting for you to resupply and get you ready to rock so you don't run out of ammo halfway through a terrorist installation. Well, you basically steal money from the villagers and you know, you'd find the merchants are so awesome that would like sell you crap. It wasn't very realistic, but it was more realistic than holy crap, I'm gonna run around with a little puny pistol the entire game. <laughs> the one thing I really enjoyed about four was it was like 
within 10 minutes, you could get a shotgun. And a shotgun's not much better than a pistol against the undead, but it's a large improvement over a 9 millimeter. And within probably five hours, you had some pretty nasty machinery. You had like a submachine gun. You had a high caliber pistol. You had a, you know, you had either, you had either like the basic shotgun or you had the, like the riot shotgun with the shortened barrel. So you could smooth faster and shoot more and it was semi-automatic instead of pump. And like if, if I'm in a, if I'm in a tactical situation in which I'm going to need to survive a long period of time and I know for a fact that I'm going to be able to find more powerful weapons that take standard ammo, I'm going to go for it. Like, I'm going to find the, you know, I'm going to find the assault rifles, the, you know, like in a real situation, that's what I would be doing. I wouldn't be going, oh my god, I have to run around with this little pistol. I'd be going, holy crap, there's an assault rifle on the dead guy. Yoink. Mine now. So anyway, yeah, I have issues with survival horror, mostly because, like the movies, I'm just like, all right, if I walked in somewhere and like horrible shit started going down, my immediate thought would be just get the fuck out of there. Not look for the killer. And I'm not talking about the paranormal shit with like, you know, enemies that can't be killed. I'm talking about like, you know, like murder mystery kind of shit. Like the, you know, he's, you know, the call came from inside the house, you know, not the Freddy Krueger shit where he's, a, you know, he's a monster that can't be killed. Because that's just silly, straight up silly. Like, I don't mind that as much because it's obviously fiction, but it's the shit with, like, it, it, like my favorite example is and always will be the remake of the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, right? They go on and on and on about all these, all these, these, these college kids that have gone missing going through this town. But nobody, no law enforcement agency ever goes in to investigate why when they reach this town they go missing. And the alternate ending that they didn't use is the FBI coming in and shooting everybody. I'm like, and that's exactly what would happen. If 40 or 50 college kids go missing when they go through it, they, they make it to the town, but they don't come out of the town. If, if I'm a law enforcement agency and I'm told that there's all these missing persons that went missing in this one town, I'm going to bring the FBI to that town and I'm going to start fucking combing it for issues. I'm not going to go, oh, well, they must have just decided to stay in that town and nobody ever heard from them, so they must have just, something happened. I don't know, they went to Mexico. No. People keep going missing in a town. You go, holy crap, we better send the fucking military in there. Right about, was it Resident Evil 3, where the, the U.S. military finally goes, holy crap, the city's, Raccoon City's full of zombies. Nuke it from orbit. Yeah, that's uh, 3. And yeah. 2. But I mean, that's, that's reality. That's what happened in real life. They would nuke that shit from orbit just to prevent the spread of whatever it is that's causing it. Like, we don't like to believe our government would do that, but that's exactly how quarantine procedures work with the military. Like, some horrible disease happens, they cordon off the entire city, and they nuke that ship from orbit to prevent the spread. Pretty much. It's one of those collateral damage. Like, you know, we're really sorry if you're uninfected and you're in the city, but we're not taking any chances. We're not letting this shit spread. We're nuking it from orbit. Because the only thing that makes sure stuff stays dead is gamma radiation. Nothing survives gamma radiation in real life. Nothing. I think this is probably where we can stop talking about stuff until yeah. next week. So, uh, why don't you play us out however you want. This, this has been a recording. If this was a real emergency, our heads would explode. No. Um, I'll go in somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're doing the best we can. We're we're pretty green at this. Uh, we hope you'll, you'll tune into our next episode after uh, I Bones have uh, watched at least some of Madoka and possibly other things because I'll have another week to go through my pile of stuff to watch. Also, you know, friends coming over, so I'll be watching something tonight that I haven't seen before. So. I'll have more to talk about next week, God willing, and something actually interesting after really what should happen, really what should happen is Kiki should give me a list of things she wants to talk to me about, and then I should go watch them or make a point to collect, you know, to buy them slash find them, watch them, and then we can talk about them and actually have, you know, stuff to talk about other than me whining about the current status of of the anime industry. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening. Um, I'm Bones. And I'm Kiki. Apparently. And again. 
You have been listening to the Super Happy Fun Jabbertron Tea Party with Kiki and Bones. Wasn't that a waste of time? <laughs>